what's going on everybody so today i'm going to show you guys how to replace an oil pressure sensor in a 3.6 liter grand cherokee now this applies to pretty much most of your 3.6 liters for the chrysler engine um, it's a vvt engine uh, you know it's kind of a difficult to access and there's a lot to remove uh, but it's not too bad um, i'm going to show you guys how to remove it and uh, let's go ahead and get into it guys removing getting access to the engine oil pressure sensor you want to go ahead and remove your engine cover here and go ahead and remove your duct from the air box to your throttle body you want to go ahead and disconnect your sensor and there should be a rail on the side of the duct you want to slide your canister off here as you see there's like a little slot here that sits on and uh, we'll go ahead and get some more of this undone there's a bracket over here with some 10 mils and another bracket there in the back. And there's another bracket behind the throttle body as well and some vacuum lines. We'll go ahead and get those undone and show you guys what's up next. So we got our intake manifold loose, our upper intake manifold. Um, just gonna pull it out now, just to show you guys. You'll have a clip here on the back. You'll have your another vacuum hose from your PCV. You'll have some more wiring. You'll have a bracket down here at the bottom. This bracket here. And you'll have a bracket down here at the bottom attached to a bolt, a stud that'll go this sits on for your clip you'll have two more 10 mils right up in here behind the throttle body and you'll have a 13 millimeter stud like I said that that one clip sits on so uh, you'll have to remove that in the back in order to access the back of the throttle body so you got to get all your wire and harness clips and move this out of the way move your vacuum hoses over push them back um, it's a pretty tedious process and it's very, very tight when you get back here to try to move that bracket. Um, you have very, very limited space. Um, ratchet wrenches help and uh, small wrenches, stubby wrenches, whatever you got. It's just very tight space. Um, I swear it's made for little kids' hands. Uh, for the top of the intake, you'll have a bolt here, here, and here, and also here and here so we'll go ahead and get this intake manifold loose and uh, get it out of the way so we can show you what else we gotta do This is actually what's holding your rails down on each side uh, for your injector rails and you'll have your crossover for your fuel rail going to the back. I've already got this one loose so to show you guys what we're accessing you'll see our top sensor 
right here, that's the one we're replacing the, temp the uh, pressure sensor. Uh, we've got to have a sensor socket, so I'm going to show you guys what else we got to do. Um, everything doesn't look too bad for the mileage on this. This one only has 15,000 miles on it. Um, just the sensor failed after we found diagnosis that the sensor failed. Um, so, show you guys what else we got to do to it, and uh, we'll get back to you. All right, guys. So, here's show you guys where I'm at. This one I showed you guys a minute ago. This is actually the temp sensor. And go a little bit further, I've got the socket and extension and ratchet set up here. And kind of hard to see, but it's the one down here where the socket's on. The more larger one, I'm going to show you guys the difference between the two. Um, this one here is actually the temperature sensor. The one down there at the bottom is actually your oil pressure sensor because this is actually the cooler. And up here is your oil filter. And this is the whole housing assembly for your oil cooler. So uh, we'll get this thing out of here and uh, get this thing wrapped up and show you guys what we got. All right, guys, we got our new one in down here. This is our old one that we just took off here. Um, nothing too special with it. Um, you would never know if it's wrong or bad until you got in and did it, um, did the diagnosis on it. Uh, just got to tighten this back up. As you can see, wells are pretty tore up, a little oily. Uh, from a little bit of oil from the intake here, and uh, because it's such tight spaces, uh, gloves can get pretty cut up. But uh, again, guys, this is our pretty much our oil pressure sensor down here. It's a bigger one. Uh, that's what you got. And uh, I'm gonna put this back together and uh, show you guys how to get it done. Connectors back on, all our other connectors, 
our bracket that went back there, our two nuts here and there. Everything's back together. Now, as you can see, it's got the torque specs here, seven to nine newton meters on these screws right here. So that's your torque specs for these. So um, all that's left really is to put our air duct and engine cover back on, clear any codes, and uh, test drive it. So uh, that's pretty much it. But uh, we'll go through, finish this up. And all right, guys. So pretty much we just finished it up. Uh, I've got everything back together. Oil pressure is just fine where it needs to be. Um, it is, it's running awesome, running just fine. The only, it was didn't really have any problems running with it before. Um, it was just throwing a check engine light, throwing a code. It was a P0520, um, nothing too crazy. Uh, it just keep throwing a code for it. Um, the customer, we had already diagnosed it. So we didn't see the diagnosis in this video. But, however, I wanted to kind of share with you guys and show you guys how to do it. Uh, maybe kind of aid in your um, diagnosis or kind of help show you guys how to get to it and how to access it a little bit. But um, that's all the time I got for you guys in this video. I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel if you guys like this video. Thumbs up, comment, subscribe, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, thanks, everybody, again for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Keep on wrenching. Bad blood. Bad blood. Bad blood. Cause I'm